Then, in the 1970s, there was an economist at University of Michigan named Robert Axelrod, who revolutionized the entire field. What he did was he took some paleolithic computer and programmed in how the prisoner's dilemma would be played, and he could program in as if there were two players, and he could program in what each one's strategy would be. And what he then did was he wrote to all of his buddies and all of his mathematician friends and prize fighters and theologians and serial murderers and Nobel Peace Prize winners, and in each case explained what was up and saying, what strategy would you use in a prisoner's dilemma game? And he gets them all back, and he programs all these different versions, and he runs a round-robin tournament. Every strategy is paired against every other strategy at one point or other. And you look at what the payoff is. You ask, which is the most optimal strategy? And out of it, shockingly to everyone, because this was a computer teaching us optimizing human behavior, out of it came one simple strategy that always outcompeted the others. This is people sitting there, probabilistic ones as to when to cooperate and lunar cycles as to what to do. The one that always won is now called tit for tat. You start off cooperating in the very first round with the individual. You cooperate. If the individual has cooperated with you in that round, you cooperate in the next round. And you cooperate, cooperate, as long as the other individual cooperates. But as soon as there's a round where the individual cheats against you, you cheat against them the next time. If they cheated at you that time also, you cheat against them the next time. If they go back to cooperating, you go back to cooperating the next time. You have this tit-for-tat strategy. In the absence of somebody stabbing you in the back, you will always cooperate. And what they found was run these hundreds of thousands of versions of these round-robin tournaments, and tit-for-tat was the one that was most optimal to begin to use a word that is not just going to be a metaphor. Tit-for-tat always drove the other strategies into extinction. And what you wound up seeing is this optimized strategy. And it was very clear why tit for tat worked so well. Number one, it was nice. You start off cooperating. Number two, it retaliates if you do something crummy to it. Number three, it is forgiving if you go back to cooperating. Number four, it's clear cut in its play. It's not some probabilistic thing. And what you get then with tit for tat is, suppose you're playing three rounds with another individual. You both cooperate the first one. You both cooperate the next one. You're playing tit for tat strategy, so you cooperate on this one. And they stab you in the back. And you can't get back at them because this is the last round. What you'll see is under lots of circumstances, tit for tat is disadvantageous. But what the soundbite is about it is, tit for tat may lose the battles, but it wins all the wars. This pattern of being nice, but being retaliatory, being forgiving, and being clear in the rules drives all the other strategies into extinction. 